us a bit about the latest developments. He's a DUP MP for East Antrim. And Sammy was mid-flow before he got cut off, telling us all about uh, basically what a, what a nasty lot the EU had been regarding Northern Ireland. But have we got a breakthrough, Sammy? What's going on? Come on, give us a ray of hope in the darkness. Well, I don't think we have the breakthrough. There, there has been some progress made on minor things, such as the interruption of trade between GB and Northern Ireland, though we don't know the exact details. And since we haven't seen the text of any deal, it amazes me that anybody can come out and say we've got a good deal and we've got a, a way forward. But the one thing which is missing from all of it is any discussion about the EU no longer having the ability to impose laws on Northern Ireland, which Northern Ireland politicians or UK politicians have no say on, those laws have to be implemented, and, they ha and, and the European Court of Justice will ensure that they are implemented. Now, that creates, first of all, a democratic deficit. No country should have laws imposed on it which they don't have any say on. And secondly, it yes. also splits us off from the rest of the United Kingdom because we will have EU law in Northern Ireland while the rest of the United Kingdom but, will have British law. No, and exactly. That it's madness. It has to be dealt with, and it doesn't appear to be dealt with at the minute. Sammy, it's madness. Some people would argue it's borderline treason, actually, and other people would argue potentially it's even some kind of very, very soft act of war, the idea that you just... I mean, if we just went and nicked a bit of Belgium, for goodness sake, and decided, oh, well, that's it, Belgium's under our jurisdiction now, I think they'd kick right off. Although, to be fair, given the track record of some people on the continent, we don't know exactly what they would do about it. But, Sammy, if Rishi Sunak does decide that, 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 that some kind of deal that means that the fair people of Northern Ireland are still essentially at the mercy of Brussels. If he decides that's a good idea, has he betrayed Britain? Well, I think that, first of all, he can no longer claim to be a, a Conservative and Unionist Prime Minister. And secondly, he has to explain to the people of the United Kingdom why he is happy to hand over a part of the United Kingdom and leave it in the, as, as a colony of um, the EU. And don't forget, I mean, the, the impact of this so far has been bad economically on Northern Ireland. It has encouraged those who want to break the union up in Scotland as well, because they say they want to see them uh, uh, benefits, as they claim it, that Northern Ireland have, i.e. Mm. to be able to have European law rather than British law applied to them. And uh, so I think that there's a, a, a serious constitutional issue here that has to be addressed because it affects the whole of the United Kingdom. And don't forget, some of the EU, lo EU laws which will apply in Northern Ireland will also impact on the, on the rest of the United Kingdom. Let me give you one example. The Chancellor can no longer mm. imp uh, uh, um, impose VAT rates across the whole of the country. VAT rates in Northern Ireland have to follow the EU rather than mm. UK rates. So even at the very heart of the fiscal policy of the United Kingdom, the mm. EU still has the ability to interfere through the protocol. Yeah, I mean, it is absolutely remarkable. We talk a lot here, don't we, about the fact that uh, on the south coast of England we're seeing what Swella Bravman has regarded as an invasion. Well, there's been a very, very subtle one that appears to have taken place in Northern Ireland, and that's taken place by the European uh, Union, hasn't it? So, are you, what's the general mood like, though? Because I would be concerned that if the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland didn't vote for Brexit, that, to me... It's pretty straightforward that maybe they wanted to stay in the EU anyway. How would you respond to people who say, well, they're getting what they want. They're in alignment with the European Union. Well, of course, the people who complain about that are also quite happy to have all of the financial benefits of being part of the United Kingdom. And since it was a UK-wide referendum, then they have to accept what the people of the United Kingdom decided as far as the relationship with foreign countries was concerned. They can't have it both ways. We want the fiscal benefits of being part of the union, but we want to have independence from the, uh, the, the uh, rest of the United Kingdom and uh, have Brussels ruling us. So, I mean, I think that uh, that's my answer to the, the, those who say, well, Northern Ireland voted for uh, to stay in the, uh, in, in the EU.